brilliant guy who wrote a, a, a fantastic book on this. Now, this book is kind of dated now, but it's still really, really effective. His name's Bob Berg, B-U-R-G, and he wrote a book uh, probably 20 years or so ago called Endless Referrals. And basically, one of the things that he said, which was really I mean, it's, it's one of the things that's kind of become my mantra, especially when I'm, when I'm teaching people how to network. He, basically what Bob said is that people do business with and refer people to people that they know, they like, and they trust. So that's, uh, so basically any one of those three things is not there. If, if they don't know you, then obviously they're not going to do business with you. If they don't like you, they're not going to do business with you. If they don't trust you, they may do business with you, but not for very long and only until they get a better, uh, a better option, right? So our goal during a networking function is not to sell, but to get more people to, to trust us. And, and that way that they're more likely now to buy from us in the future or refer other people to us. That's how you increase that word of mouth advertising. If they don't trust us, they're not going to refer anybody to us, right? So one way to get people to know us and like us and trust us is to help them get what they want. So um, like, for instance, people like other people who are interested in them. The most important topic to anybody that you're talking to is, is, is themselves, right? People love to, to talk about themselves or herself. So since you're at a meeting that where people really want to promote themselves or promote their service or promote their company or promote their product, then if we help them do that better, then they're going to like us more and they're going to trust us more, right? So um, basically, you can ask questions of the other person. If you get the other person to do a lot of the talking and you ask them questions, then the, the, that level of trust is going to increase pretty dramatically. And you're going to find out more about them if you're genuinely interested in them anyway. And, you know, and that will help you refer other people to them if you find somebody else in the room that's a, a good prospect for them, right? So like, for instance, um, the first question that a lot of people ask is, what's your name? Now, obviously, that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of normal. That There's nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, the second question would be, hey, so what do you do? Now, still, that's kind of normal, and especially in a business card exchange. Those are, those are our two questions that typically are, are kind of first in any type of networking. So um, it, it, nobody's guard is going to be up at that point. Next question is, you might ask them, hey, do you travel much? What territory do you work in? Are, is, your, are you, is this the company that you work for that you own? Is it a local company? Or you know, do you do business um, all over the, the region, the country, you know, whatever, right? Um, it helps you know a little bit more about their, their scope or their, their, their breadth for their, for their company, right? Um, now, and, and by the way, the, um, the those first three questions again those are typically simple kind of questions that that most people are going to ask and and they're going to be very easy for somebody to to kind of answer now the next few questions though are questions that people really really want to answer they want to tell people that especially at these networking groups these things about themselves and about their company but a lot of times they don't ever get asked these questions right um, like for instance, the next question would be, Hey, so what do you like most about that's an interesting industry that you're in? What do you like most about that? Or what do you enjoy most about being a doctor? What do you enjoy most about being an in insurance? What do you enjoy most about whatever it is that they do? Right. And by the way, this keeps the conversation really positive and gives you more insight about that person and about that person's organization, their company. Right. Another question that you're going to ask them would be, hey, so what makes your company unique or different from your competition? What makes you different from the other folks that do what you do? And this gives them a chance to brag a little bit. And a lot of times folks will not have even thought about that. And when you ask them a question like that and they give you the answer, they go, wow, yeah, okay, that makes sense, right? And now you're getting to know a lot about the, about the, the person as well. Um, one of the last questions is, hey, so what are some of your accomplishments? What are some of the things that you're proud of? What are, you, what are some of the things that you've done that, that uh, is, is kind of notable? So again, you're giving them, especially with those last couple of questions, you're giving them a chance to really brag about how great they are. Most people don't ever ask them questions like that. And so as a result of just asking those few questions, even if you just ended the conversation there and and um, kind of went on and started networking with somebody else, then as that person kind of leaves, they're, that person's going, man, that person is a good conversation. So man, I like talking to Doug, man. He's really cool, right? Um, the, the last question, though, is one that I learned from Bob Berg, and this is his, his big tip. And it, I tell you, when, when I heard him say this the first time, 
I, w- I, I really thought, God, that is brilliant. I, I, Cause I would have never thought of this myself. I mean, this guy's, like I said, Bob's really, really smart, but he always, he recommends anyway that people end by asking how, you might recognize somebody else who would be a good prospect for that person. Since we know that the other people that are in that forum are looking for um, somebody to, to kind of sell to, if you can help them find that person who they want to sell to and you introduce those two people, now all of a sudden you become the, the, the sphere of influence. So, hey, so I, if I were talking to somebody who might be a good prospect for you, what would I be looking for? Or how would I know that somebody would be a good prospect for you? And then you kind of take notes, right? And every one of these questions that we're asking, these are questions that will help you get really, really good at getting to know that person and, and really finding out what he or she does and, and what they're good at. And the interesting thing is, is that a lot of times what folks will kind of say is um, they'll say, yeah, but uh, you know, if I, if I really am there to kind of sell or I'm really am there to network, you know, I'm finding out about the other person, but they're not finding out anything about me. So how in the world am I going to, um, you know, what, what benefit is that to me? Well, Two, two answers to that question. The first answer to that question is that typically whatever question you ask of one person, of the person that you're talking to, a lot of times they'll ask you the same question in return. Like, I mean, it, you, you've probably seen this a lot where you say, hey, so where are you from? And then the person kind of tells you. And then a lot of times they'll, when there's a pause in the conversation, they'll kind of go, oh, so where are you from, right? So what do you do for a living? Oh, so what do you do for a living, right? So typically whatever question that you ask of somebody they, they, a lot of times, if the person is a good conversationalist, they'll ask you those questions back. And, and that's a great benefit if they do that. Sometimes they don't, you know, sometimes people just aren't really confident or comfortable in, in a communication like that. And especially if they get really on a roll answering your questions, you know, they may end up doing a lot of the talking, but that's okay because you still serve the purpose. You've gotten to know who it is that would be a good prospect for that person. So now, you, when you find other people who, uh, who might be a good prospect for that person or who might be a good fit for your new contact, you just go and introduce them. And with that type of information that's at your fingertips, and by the way, it's a good idea to, to write the information down on the back of a, you know, if it's, at a, if it's in person business card exchange and they give you a business card, a lot of times you can jot down some of that information on the back of their business card when you leave them. But if you do that as you network, if you're kind of making notes, then eventually you're going to come across somebody who would be a good prospect for that person. And the moment that you introduce those two people, you become the center of influence in that group, right? Between the three of you, you're now the center of influence. You're the people, you're the person anyway, who is introducing other people to each other. You do this a couple of times and the word is going to spread very quickly about how you are the person that everybody needs to know. So what, what really makes this process so successful is that third party endor- endorsement, the person who you're helping to promote, you know, when you, when you promote that person's product or service, there's no longer a struggle to find a warm prospect. You're giving them a warm prospect because you're giving them your third party endorsement. Now they're receiving that, that, endorsement from you and it should be a whole lot easier for them to market their their services or whatever it is that they do right that gives that person tremendous credibility to this prospect so you're helping both parties you're helping people you're helping the the person who has a need that the that the the salesperson can fulfill you're helping them get over that need and you're also helping the salesperson find a a, a really warm prospect or 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 customer anyway so the people that you that you tend to help in this way, they they tend to remember and then they return the favor. A lot of times they'll return it tenfold because now, I mean, it's not really about gaining obligation from other people, but it's definitely when when um, they come across somebody now that would be a good prospect for you, they are not going to recommend that somebody to anybody other than you, right? So if they know who you're looking for as a customer and you've already provided them one or two customers of uh, that, that uh, you've kind of introduced them to, now all of a sudden that, that obligation is there and they return the favor tenfold. So the more that you do this, by the way, the bigger that your sphere grows. So eventually what will happen is you're going to walk into a room and the, the, 
uh, a lot of times people that you've never even met before will be bringing prospects to you. <laughs> the key to making this process, the process work though, is consistency and the ability to catalog information about the people that you meet. So if you create a system that works for you, you'll dramatically increase the word of mouth advertising about your company. Now, hey, Dad, just so you know, we do teach uh, folks how to do this. This is one of the one of the techniques that we teach in our sales training program. So if um, if you have a group of salespeople that you really want to get better at networking, or if you are involved in a social organization or a, um, you know, a, a club of some type where people come to that club for networking and the networking doesn't really work very well and you want to increase that, make sure and give us a call. Sometimes we can give you a few pointers. You can get uh, details on uh, leadersinstitute.com for any of that kind of stuff. Anyway, so thanks a lot for being a part of High Impact Leaders, guys. We'll see you next week. <music>